Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn it to the book of Isaiah. This is the continuation of the Isaiah commentary. We're going to do chapter 47. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There are a lot of similarities between Babylon in the Old Testament, as mentioned in Jeremiah, Isaiah, and the book of Daniel, and the, well, that was the physical Babylon. Contrast that with the spiritual Babylon of Revelation, the revelation of John. And it kills me when I hear people say, well, I don't understand Revelation. It's, it's, it's so hard to understand. The very word revelation means to reveal, to understand. Well, you know why you don't understand it? Because you've never read the rest of the Bible. Revelation symbolism comes from the rest of the Bible. The Old Testament's types and shadows and symbolisms are referenced all the time in the book of Revelation. That's why you people don't understand. I mean, you know, when I first came to the Lord, the first thing I did was turn to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, and I read until I got to Revelation chapter 22. That's And I was doing um, Bible studies in between, but that's what I did. I read it from cover to cover, starting at the beginning. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm nobody special, trust me. So, here we go, Isaiah 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans. Now, the Chaldeans and the Babylonians were uh, always tied in together. I suppose it's sort of like uh, you've got 50 states in the United in the United States. You know, I guess it's like saying America and Texas, or America, you know, America and New York, or America and California. I don't know, but they're always tied in together: the Chaldeans and the Babylonians. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender. And delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Now, when you're taking a millstone and you're grinding meal, uh, you know, that, that's not something that a tender and delicate daughter of a king would be doing. No, that's a common labor doing grinding meal. That's that's a tough job, believe it or not. Verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Spiritual uh, nakedness. That's exactly what it's talking about. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. No, the Lord's going to meet you as the God of Israel. Verse 4. Now, the subject changes from Babylon to Israel. Verse 4. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name 
the Holy One of Israel. When Jesus was confronting a man possessed of devils in Luke 4.34, they were saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Oh, yeah. Back to Isaiah 47, verse 4. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name the Holy One of Israel. Verse 5. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Hmm. Now, the Chaldeans, from what I understand, they were big on astrology, and they were the soothsayers, and the, they were into that kind of stuff, sorceries. That was their, that was their deal. Verse 6, I was wroth. God was angry. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. God gave them into the hand of the Chaldeans and the Babylonians. He says, Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. In other words, they took the old men and gave them a heavy burden they had no pity upon him. Verse 7. And thou sayest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am. Huh. I am? That's what, uh, remember when the Lord spoke to Moses and Moses said, uh, okay, you're sending me to the children of Israel and when they asked me what's your name, what am I going to tell them? And the Lord says, I am that I am. Jesus even, now I'm paraphrasing, but you know, the thing is, Jesus told the Pharisees that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. And they said, you're not even 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. He identified himself as I am. They understood perfectly what he was saying. But here it is. In verse 8, the Lord speaking to Babylon, Therefore hear now this, Thou that art given to pleasure, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I will not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. I shall not sit as a win widow? All right, so the Lord speaking of physical Babylon Let's contrast this with spiritual Babylon. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen 
is fallen. Now, why would the why would they say that twice? I know I've said it before, but you know, when I went to college, I went to Palm Beach State College, and I always learned that if the instructor or the professor said something the same thing more than once, write it down, memorize it because it's going to be on the test and it always seemed to be on the test. But he says Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Okay, this is going to be on the test, right? Babylon the Great, physical Babylon, was destroyed and it was prophesied to never be rebuilt. But why say it twice? Well, you got physical Babylon and then you got spiritual Babylon. Ah, so that's why. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, spiritual fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Listen carefully. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, here's the punchline, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Isn't that what, what we just read? Isaiah 47, verse 8. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Ah. Verse 7. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Ah, yes. Doesn't sound good, does it? Let's see. Let's go back back to the uh, last sentence of verse 7 in Isaiah oh wait nope never mind verse 9 of Isaiah 47 but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day the loss of children and widowhood they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Hmm. So where do we read about sorceries? In Revelation 9 and verse 21, the, the Lord says, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, 
nor of their thefts. Revelation 18.23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Hmm, okay. Let's go back. Isaiah 47, verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. In other words, I'm doing all this in secret. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. See, that's that was mentioned twice. Verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. And that was fulfilled physically when the um, Persians under Cyrus and Darius absolutely destroyed Babylon. Verse 12, Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, astrologers, there's a big difference between astrology, which is the study of the heavens, and astrology, which is saying that the planets and the stars uh, determine your destiny. I don't think so. I think the creator of the stars determines our destiny based upon our beliefs and our actions. What do you think? Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants, from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. That's the end of Isaiah chapter 47. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.